Hey everyone, Jara here and I'm back with another sewing tutorial. Now in this video, we're gonna learn how to make this beautiful wrap skirt. Now this is just part one, the prep work, so we won't be doing any sewing, all right? Now let's get into the supplies that are needed to make this skirt. When you print out your pattern, you will also get a supplies list and a pattern layout. This layout will help you when it's time to assemble your pattern. It'll be three layouts, layout one, two, and three. In the description below is where you will find the link to purchase your PDF pattern. You will also need tape to tape your PDF pattern together, and you also need rulers. I like to use Fisker and Westcott, but you can also use a measuring tape. You will also need thread, one that doesn't match your fabric and one that does match your fabric. Now this is my fabric for my final skirt, but I will also be using another fabric during this tutorial to make it easier for you guys to see my lines and my markings. You will also need fusible interfacing. Ultra lightweight is best so that way it's not bulky. You will also need fabric marking tools. There are many different types of fabric marking tools. The one that you'll choose is based off of the fabric that you have. So I would say test them out and make sure that they show up on your fabric. I personally like the Mark Be Gone, but depending on what fabric I'm working with, I can use any one of these. This is also a chalk wheel that's a marking tool that you can use with a roller. It'll help you draw your lines straight. And then you can also use thread to mark some of your spots as well. You'll see me do that later on in the tutorial. You will also need wax-free tracing paper. This is gonna help you transfer some of your markings onto your fabric. Now this may not work for your fabric depending on what type of fabric you have. Um, this is the tracing wheel that you're gonna use with the wax-free tracing paper. You'll also need a seam ripper. You'll also need the right sewing machine needles. For my skirt, I'm going to be using woven, but what I like is that they offer different types. You have universal, and then you also have Singer that provides you with knit and woven needles. I will be using a woven needle, size 14, but what I love about Singer is that they offer both knit and woven sewing machine needles. Now the kind of needle you'll need is all based on the type of fabric that you're sewing. You will also need your buttonhole foot for your sewing machine because we will be making a buttonhole. You will also need your pins. I will also be using pattern weights. If you don't have any, it's okay. You can just use your pins. But these pattern weights are super easy to make. Like this one is just a bunch of washer weights. I think it's like three of them. And this is just a pillowcase with beads inside. Um, so you can make your own if you want. You will also need a paper scissors, a fabric scissors, and a pinking shears if you don't have a serger. Now, I love this pinking shears because what it does is it stops my fabric from fraying. So I'm going to show you an example of what I mean right here. Now, it's okay if you don't have a pinking shears, but it's something that you really want to invest in, especially if you don't have a serger. And these are all the supplies that we will be using. Now, if you're a beginner, this may seem like a lot of things, but a lot of these things you'll use again and again and again. So it's definitely good to have. Now we're gonna go over the type of fabrics that you can use to make this skirt. You can use chiffon, georgette, lace, sheer cotton, mesh, silk, satin, and things like that. I'm gonna be using this silk fabric and also this cotton fabric. It's super thin and very sturdy. So you'll get a view of what both look like. You'll see a flowy fabric and then you'll also see a more stiff fabric, all right? And here's an example of what the stiff fabric will look like. All right, and now we're going to assemble our pattern. All right, we have three piles here because we have three different layouts. So based off of the numbers in layout one, that would be my first pile, and then layout two would be my second pile, and then layout three would be my third pile. All right, and I'm going by all the numbers that are inside these squares. So you got one, two, and three. And then also I want you to pay attention to the fact that there's empty spaces so that means there will be no paper where these empty spots are and we're gonna work in columns we're gonna work in instead of rows all right you'll see what I mean in a second all right what I'm doing right now is separating my papers according to the columns that are on my layout so I start off with one two and three then it's four five and six and then so forth and this is what it's going to look like when you're finished you're gonna have this column 
this column ends in 19, this column ends in 20, this one ends in 21, and so forth. And then you're gonna place each column on top of the other column. All right, and this line at the top is your guideline for placing your previous paper on top of it. So right here is where I show you example of what I mean. So 15 needs to go on top of 20, and then the page before that needs to go on top of 15. All right, and just need two pieces of tape. You don't need a whole lot of tape. And you're gonna tape it together, and this is how it's gonna look. All right, and then you're gonna do the same thing to all the other columns, and this is what it's gonna look like. And then after that, you're gonna take this column and you're gonna place it on the previous column. You're gonna match this one right here with this line that's right here. You're gonna put it right on top. And then you're gonna do the same thing to the other ones. And this is what it's gonna look like when you're finished. And then you can go ahead and cut out your piece. Your final piece should look just like this. This is our front piece that we've been working on. And then next we're going to do our back and also our waistband and our ties. All right, so layout two, and then we're gonna knock out layout three as well. Okay, and this is what the back piece should look like. And as you can see, the numbers are upside down, so that is correct. You didn't do anything wrong if your numbers are upside down. All right, just go ahead and follow the layout to the T. It'll show you exactly how it's supposed to look, all right? Now these are our waistbands and our left and right tie. All right, so we should have a total of five pieces. So these three plus your back and your front piece. Okay, now we're gonna cut out our fabric. On this side you have your selvage, and on this side is your selvage, this side is your cut edge, and this side is your cut edge. Your selvage is your finished edge. All right, and we're gonna start now with our first pattern piece. We're going to start with our front. You wanna locate your grain line. All of your pattern pieces will have a grain line and you want to make sure the arrow is pointed in the same direction on all your pattern pieces when you lay them down. You also want to make sure that your grain line is parallel to your selvages. So remember you have a selvage on both sides. And you also want to make sure your fabric and your pattern piece are both right side up. Okay, now you want to grab your roller and you want to place the edge of your roller with your selvage, making sure that it's straight. And then you're going to have your grain line line up with one of these lines on the roller. You want it to be straight with the line on the roller. Now as you're maneuvering it to try and get it straight, you want to watch your edges and make sure that your pattern doesn't go off of the fabric. Alright, so keep that line, get that line straight and then make sure you watch all of your edges that they don't go off the fabric. You want to also make sure you hold the ruler in place by placing your left or right hand on the edge of it to make sure it does not move while you're moving the pattern piece. Alright, I feel like that end is a little too close to the edge of the fabric, so I'm going to move it up a half an inch. So on this side, it's about 12 and a half inches. So if you don't have a fiscal ruler, you can use a measuring tape. So if I measure from this part of the grain line to the selvage and this part of the grain line to the selvage, I should get the same distance. So I should get 12 and a half. Now your distance may not be 12 and a half. That's just what I'm getting based off of where I am at on my fabric. You could have 13 or you could have 17. It just depends on how you lay yours out. All right, and now we're gonna go ahead and pin our pattern piece. We're going to go all the way around and then do the same thing to our other pieces. You're going to use the ruler on all your pieces to make sure that all of your grain lines are parallel with the selvages. You can use the selvage on either side. All right, and I went ahead and added this piece as well. So you're going to go ahead and cut it out, and this is what everything should look like. Now I'm going to go ahead and take up my right tie, my left tie, and my waistband. 
all of the markings that I need to transfer from these pieces, which are these dots right here, I'm gonna do on the table later, all right, as well as the buttonhole. But these pieces on the floor, the front and the back, I'm gonna do them right now. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out all of my notches for my front piece and my back piece. And then I'm going to also transfer this dot onto my fabric using the pin and fabric marking tool technique. Now I'm going to push the pin through the hole and then I'm going to take the marker and I'm going to mark it right where the pin is coming out at. Now this technique will not work on all types of fabric. So if you have a busy type of fabric or a fabric where it just won't show up, I'm going to show you different techniques when I get to the waistband, the right tie and the left tie. So don't worry if this doesn't work for you. So this right here is the right side of my fabric, but on the other side, I'm gonna put an X or a WS to mark the wrong side. Because if you have a fabric that's like mine, where it's hard to tell which side is the right side and which side is the wrong side, you want to write underneath these two pieces, WS or an X. So I did both right here just to show you what that looks like. Okay, so what I'm doing right now is transferring my grain line to the back of my pattern piece because I'm going to flip my pattern piece upside down on the fabric and I need to be able to see my grain line so that I can measure it from my salvage. So that may sound a little tricky, but if you pay attention, you'll see what I mean. But I'm taking my tracing wheel that's a little bit rigid and I'm running it across the line so that way it causes a dotted line on the other side of the paper. So when I hold it up, I hope you guys can see that it's like a dotted line so that way I can see clearly. And then I'm going to take my ruler again and I'm going to trace that dotted line. So now I have my grain line on the back of my pattern piece. I'm going to go ahead and do this to my back piece as well. So this is my front pattern piece. I'm going to do the same thing to my back pattern piece. And I also want to transfer this dot right here. So that way I can see it when I'm going back to my fabric to cut it out. So this is what I mean. So now my pattern pieces are upside down. So before we had them right side up, but now we're going to have them wrong side up. I hope this is making sense. If it's not, comment below, let me know, and I'll redefine, I'll re-explain myself. All right, and you're gonna grab your ruler and do the same thing as we did before. You're gonna measure from the selvage to your grain line and make sure that grain line is parallel to your selvage. After you do that, you're gonna go ahead and pin it and then you're gonna go ahead and cut it out. Make sure you cut out all of your notches and transfer your dot. I didn't realize I was out of frame here, so I apologize if you can't see what I'm doing, but I'm just transferring my dot. All right, and now I can take off my pattern piece and then I'm gonna go ahead and write my X or my WS to mark my wrong side of my fabric. This time I'll be doing it on top instead of underneath. Now, if your fabric is different than mine, you can clearly see what side is the wrong side or right side, you won't have to worry about that. And now we're gonna transfer these dots and all of our pattern markings onto our fabric. That includes our buttonhole and all dots. And also you wanna cut out all of your notches. So as I said before, I'm gonna teach you a bunch of different ways to transfer your pattern markings because some fabrics can be too busy for certain techniques. So I'm gonna teach you about four different techniques right now so that way you know which one works best for your fabric. So like before, we did the pin and the fabric marking tool where you just push it through the hole and you mark right where it's coming out of. Now this is super easy, but it doesn't work for all fabrics. The next technique that I'm gonna use is the awl. Now this one is super, super easy. You literally just push it through the hole. Okay, now with this next technique, you're going to need a sewing needle and some thread. Now you can just go through the dot and leave the thread like this 
but it won't be um, secure enough. So as you move the pattern pieces around, your thread can come out. So what we're gonna do right now is secure that thread. You're gonna go ahead and put the thread back through the eye of the needle. And then you're gonna pick up a piece of fabric right where the thread is coming out at. Just like this. Now with some fabrics, going through one time is enough, but I like to go through a second time just to really make sure it's not gonna come out while I'm maneuvering my pattern pieces. Okay, and so then you're gonna get your scissors and you're gonna trim some of the thread so that way it's not in your way. And here we have three different techniques. You have the fabric marking tool, the awl, and the thread technique. And now I'm gonna show you one more technique. We're gonna use the wax-free tracing paper and our tracing wheel on this pattern piece. Now you wanna open out your wax-free tracing paper and you wanna have the side where the chalk is, you wanna have that faced up. You're gonna place that underneath your fabric. Actually, it's best to fold it in half. So you're gonna place your fabric in between both pieces so the chalk should be touching your fabric. And then you're gonna take the tracing wheel and you're gonna draw an X right on top of the dot. And this is what it should look like. We're gonna use that same technique to transfer our buttonhole onto our fabric. Go ahead and remove your pin so that way you can get in between the fabric and the pattern. Make sure that the chalk side of the wax-free tracing paper is touching the fabric. Then you're gonna go ahead and you're gonna trace your line and draw an X over top of the dot. And this is what it's gonna look like. Now I want you to keep in mind that you can also use the other techniques that I taught you as well, which is the pen with the, the fabric marking tool or the awl. Because depending on what type of fabric you have, the wax-free tracing paper may not work as well. So now what I'm doing here is I'm gonna finish out my pattern pieces, transferring my markings by poking out all of my holes with the awl because the awl is just basically the easiest tool to use. And my fabric here is super easy. All right, so go ahead and finish transferring all of your markings to all of your pattern pieces. Next up, I have to cut my interfacing because as it says here on the pattern piece, I need to also cut one of my waistbands out of my interfacing. You wanna make sure the bumpy side is up and the smooth side is down when you're cutting out your interfacing. And then also with your pattern piece, you wanna make sure the waistband's right side is up. All right, and then you're gonna go ahead and do the whole grain line and selvage thing. So this is your selvage and that is your selvage over there. After that, you're gonna cut out your piece. You're gonna transfer all of your markings. I hope you guys can see that. All right, and we're pretty much done. This is what our final piece should look like. This is our interfacing for our waistband. So you wanna make sure you're transferring all of your markings. You guys see that? All right, and I went ahead and transferred my buttonhole. You will not need to transfer your buttonhole because it won't be seen, but you will need to do the dots. All right, and we're pretty much done. Thank you for checking out part one for the sewing tutorial for this wrap skirt, and I look forward to seeing you guys in part two. Till next time, bye.